And this is a one-wheel GT with one of the best upgrades you can make, WTF rails. We made 10 sets of them in this special edition Tiffany blue and 10 sets in pink. Here's the catch. We're going to do a little social experiment, a little test in patience for you guys. The first day, they're all going to go on sale for $1,000 a set. I already bought two sets. I already bought two sets, Jeff. But you know what I can do? They do look pretty. I love that, that colorway of the blue and the pink. So I will change the lights behind me to the Tiffany blue and the Bodie pink. What's going on again, my floaty friends? Steve Ginter here, and yes, I have yet another set of WTF rails, but not the same set. This time, I've got the steep and deeps. And I'm gonna try not to rehash everything I said in my previous video regarding the standard WTFs for the GT. If you wanna know more about that and my thoughts and wanna see some ride footage, go check out that video. I'll have a link down in the description or up in the corner. This time though, I'm gonna show you how to install these because I did have quite a few people ask how to install them. So it's pretty straightforward, but just in case you've never done it before, hopefully this will make it feel like you can do it yourself. In any case, here we go. We got the Packed by Brad set of this time. Come on out. Ooh. Silver steep and deep rails. And man, they look beautiful. So at first glance, there are a few differences that I can spot right away. One being that it says float now on top instead of having the F logo that I've got there on the black ones. And on the bottom, it says, Steep and deep. That's pretty funny, but also pretty awesome. And the other thing I quickly notice is that the hub bolts are a six-sided hex instead of being circular. Not sure why that changed, but uh, that's just the way it is now. So in any case, let's get to installing. I'm gonna bust out the old trusty work mat. I mentioned this before, but having a work mat is awesome. It catches all the dirt and catches your screws when they inevitably fall somewhere and you can't find them, hopefully the mat catches it. I'll leave a link for this mat down below. If you want to buy it, use my link. Helps out the channel just a little bit. In any case, let's get to it. All right, step one, you're going to want to remove your fender or fender deletes. So actually, hold on. Step zero, make sure you got your tools ready. I have the GT toolkit from the Float Life. It has all the bits you need in it to work on your board. So if you don't have the right bits already, I recommend just picking this up because it'll give you everything you need. Okay, back to step one. Remove your fender or fender delete first. There are just four screws for it. One, two, three, four. And yes, these are custom cut fender deletes that I had to make. Pretty simple, just a Dremel and a little bit of sandpaper. Let me know if you're curious on how to do that. All right, step number two, turn your board over and remove your bumpers. The front bumper has four screws. The rear bumper has six screws. There should be four that are closest to the ground. Well, now they're not, but when it's flipped over, those four are gonna be the only screws that are short, unless, uh, unless Future Motion gave you the wrong screws when they repaired your board. They should be your short screws, so it's easy to remember which screws are which, is that the short screws are the ones closest to the ground. So we're gonna take those out first. And there are two more screws on the very ends of the board. Those are your standard length GT screws. And in my case, they are XR screws because again, Future Motion decided to use the XR screws on this board for some reason, which means I gotta find that bit again. And by the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch my last video about having my battery replaced. I'm not gonna talk about it. This video is supposed to be a happy video. Happy video. All right, this is great. This is good stuff. All right, so now that you have all the screws removed from the bottom, four over here, six over here, the front one slides forward. It might be a little hard to pull off at first because the dirt causes friction, but you know, give it a good tug and eventually, and eventually, and eventually it'll come off. And the back one doesn't slide off, it 
just lifts off. So there's your back one. All right, now that we have the fender or, or fender delete off and the bumpers, the next thing to do is take off your foot pads. So on the bottom, there's two hidden underneath the rails on the front and another two on the back. They're in the same spot. And those are the ones that typically get forgotten when you're reassembling the board. Try not to forget those. There are two on the bottom for the front and back. And there's also two on the top from the front and back. We'll get to those. And right, while you're under here, you might want to disconnect your foot pad sensor on the front. It is the small plug right here. And you might be able to do it by hand. If not, you can use like some needle nose pliers. I would be extra careful if you're using pliers. You wanna be careful with these plugs because they can break. But basically, you wanna loosen the screw on it counterclockwise. And once it's loosened up, you should be able to just wiggle it out just like that. Okay, so now for the last screws for the foot pads, two on the top, close to the wheel. One there, one there, one there, and one there. And that is why we disconnected the foot pads so that we can just pull it right off. And those are nice and easy to come off. By the way, I got a video on these flat kick foot pads. If you're curious my thoughts on them, I like them, hence why I'm still using them. Go check out that video if you want some more stuff to watch later. All right, you'll know a little wipe down on this guy. And yep, I'm still missing a screw on my security box that Future Motion did not include when they repaired it. I just removed it over there. Now comes the fun part. And I always get confused on the best way to do this, so if you have a suggestion, let me know. But basically, we are going to next loosen up these hub bolts. And they're the, the tightest thing on the board typically. So if you get the GT tool kit from the Float Life, it should come with this guy. And this is, was it a Torx Plus 45 or a Ribe M8? I don't know, the debate is open. I've tried both, they both work. I'm just gonna use this guy because it gives me a little more leverage. Yeah. I kind of like to start off just loosening these up and not completely remove them yet because I don't want the wheel to fall through. And do the other side. Now that I have those loosened up, you can hear that it is loose. We need to disconnect the controller box and the battery box from the rails. And there are four screws that hold the controller box in place, four screws that hold the battery box in place. Very straightforward. Same bit, same star pattern. Just go at it and start, start removing them. Oop. Yep, thank you Rubber Matt for catching that screw. And now we're gonna do the back end and hope that everything doesn't just fall on me like it normally does. But again, at least I got the rubber mat here and hopefully nothing gets messed up. So now these rails should be wanting to come off. They're just held in place by the hub bolts. And I'm going to carefully remove the hub bolts all the way. One hub bolt, two hub bolts. Now this rail should come off like that. Set you down there. And carefully bring it over onto this side. Yep. And same thing on this side, just gonna do it over here because the parts all wanna fall on me. The main thing I'm trying to watch out for is these cables, of course. We don't want the plugs or the cables to be pulled or stretched too hard. They are pretty durable, but they are also not really replaceable. So those are the parts we're most concerned with. And hey, all the rails are off the board. On the inside of this rail is the Float Life's motor plug retention cable. This cable right here goes to the motor and can potentially pop out or break off or if you've over tightened this, you might have broken the little plastic tabs and it doesn't stay in place very well. So having a motor retention cable helps hold it in place and we need to transfer that over to the new ones. So let's take that off of there and move that now so we don't forget. Yep. 
Remember folks, if you're using a power tool to be very careful, you do not want to be stripping your screw heads or the threading in your rails or your battery box or your controller box. You can still use it, but do it with very careful execution. Okay, you know what? While I have all the rails here, let's check them out real quick. Let's see, I know the Float Life did this as well, but these are your standard WTF rails and these are the steep and deep WTF rails. And they should come up higher, which yes, they do. I can see it from this side. Hopefully it shows it on that side, but there is a little more clearance. The standard ones I think have like a three degree tilt and I think the steep and deeps have a five degree tilt. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, they are slightly higher. When you look at them from this side, trying to hold it as level as I can so that the holes match up for the axle bolts go through, but I can see that it is definitely has more height there and clearance on both the tail and the nose. All right, so all there's left to do now is do everything in reverse, but with the new rails. So I'm gonna speed through this. Hopefully that was enough information for you to know how to take your one wheel rails off. And by the way, this works for any rails you're using. For the most part, some rails do have special axle carriers that you do need to take into consideration. But with these ones, you just use the standard uh, axle mount on there from Future Motion and it fits right in there like it's supposed to be there. So we're gonna go ahead and speed through this process and get these installed ASAP. All right, and before you forget, I'm gonna remind you again, don't forget the four screws on the bottom of the foot pads. <clears throat> for your motion. <clears throat> They're located right here and right here. Cause I guarantee you, once you put those bumpers back on, you're not even gonna know that you forgot until you look around and you're like, huh, why do I have two or four extra screws sitting around? Yeah, those are probably the ones that go there. Also, while you're under here, don't forget to plug your foot pad sensor back in. Be very gentle with it. Carefully line up the little notch that's on there. And once it goes in a little bit, you kind of like slide that little rotating piece into, and then push it in a little bit more, make sure it's nice and flush. And you can try and tighten it by hand again or very carefully with needle nose pliers. Or if you buy a foot pad from Future Motion, they do include this little tool that is specifically shaped for this sensor. And it's only like half a turn typically. So that's where people get confused. They keep tightening it, they over tighten it and they break it. And uh, yeah, it sucks. So last thing, bumpers. I got new bumpers because your boy goes through a ton of bumpers. Float life, where are the bang bumpers for the GT? Please, please make them. As you can see, I have many boxes that all look the same. That's because these are all the bumpers that I go through. The only thing that's nice about getting a new set of bumpers, well, aside from them being new, is that they come with the screws, which means I can put the right screws back in the right spot. All right, slide the front one back on. Another reminder, the short screws are the ones closest to the ground. So there's two in the front, four on the back. The very end ones are your standard length GT screws. Last thing, fender delete. 
Okay, moment of truth if this is going to fit or not. I cut these specifically for the height of the previous rails because they were angling inward towards the wheel. And if we're lucky, these ones will still work without rubbing. I think we're good. We'll have to really ride it to find out, but look at this sexy board now. Back to being scratch free again for, I don't know, an hour. <laughs> I like the silver. I didn't buy it because it's cheaper. I bought it because, well, see how many scratches I got on the black ones? I debated sharpieing the scratches, but it didn't really matter. So got the silvers now and I got more clearance on the nose now. One more thing. We got to do one more thing. We got to relevel this board. Just in case it doesn't match the other ones, we're going to relevel this board and I'm going to show you how to do it. It's pretty easy. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, well, it really helps, but I find that using a bucket is one of the easiest ways to get the board level. And you want to make sure that your ground is level, so that your bucket is level, so that your board can be level. So get your board in the bucket and try to make sure it's level. All right, we got ourselves a little budget ghetto leveler. And there's a nice flat spot on the rail right there where you can place it and you can see if it's level. And well, I can't see if it's level, so I'm gonna do it on this, this side. If your ground is not level or your table is not level, you can shim something under the bucket or you can shim something underneath the wheel, the board, and try to get it level because it's much easier if you have something that it's sitting on to do this. Okay, so the way that I do this is I use an app called OW Dig Tilt. It is a beta app, so in order to install it, you're gonna wanna install the app called Test Flight. Don't be intimidated by it. It's basically an app from Apple for developers, and that will allow you to run beta apps on your iPhone. So download Test Flight from the App Store first, and then I'm gonna provide a link down in the description to download the OW Digital Tilt app. And once you open that one up, it's fairly straightforward. It tells you exactly what to do step by step. So here it says before continuing, make sure the one wheel app is either disconnected from your board or not running. So typically what I'll do is I'll go to my one wheel app and swipe up and make sure it is closed. I'll go back to the OWDT app and then I'll hit next. It's gonna look for boards and it's not gonna see it because I didn't turn it on yet. So let me turn it on. And there it is, it showed up in the list. I'm gonna click on it, hit next. Now, step three, it says open the one wheel application and connect to your board. When you are ready, click next. So, go back to my home screen, open up the one wheel app, and make sure I connect to the board. I'm gonna wait for it to fully load, there we go. We have a fully, almost fully charged board. And now I can swipe back to this app and hit next. You're just calibrating it at the level that the one wheel currently sits at. So that's why we wanted to have it as level as possible. That's why I suggested a bucket of some sort. Any way you can get your board as level as possible. If you're really good at holding it level and you, you've got a good eye, you can try that. You might not get it right the first time, but you could do this as many times as you want. In any case, you're gonna hit that big calibrate repair process. You're gonna see a bunch of code fly by. You're gonna see your status light, status bar blink a few times, and it should say done. It should take like a second. You hit done, and that's it. That is it, your board has been leveled. So this works for W rails, this works for lightning rails. I don't think you need to calibrate mustache rails, um, any of the 357 rails. This is how I do it on the iPhone. I haven't done it on Android yet. If you wanna see a video on how to do it on Android, let me know. I do have an Android phone that I can use, but let's get this guy off the bucket real quick. Bring it in. There we go. And we can see that that is pretty level. I think. Look level to you? I usually know by riding it. Speaking of riding it, I think it's about that time to go for a ride. So I'm gonna go test out these rails 
see if I can feel the difference compared to the standard WTFs and come back here with my final thoughts about these uh, steep and deeps. Okay, see you on the trail. Okay, so this was my first ride with the Steep and Deeps, so take it for what it is, but I love them. I love the extra clearance I'm getting from these rails. You've seen what I've been riding through, there's a lot of rocks, a lot of chunk, and there is some inclines, and having that extra clearance, even though it's just a little bit, does make a difference. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video on the WTF rails, those ones were the standard WTFs. Those rails give you a slightly lower center of gravity, making them a much more stable ride, but you don't get any additional clearance on the nose or on the tail. So that's why I already changed up to the steep and deep versions of the WTF, and they're delivering what I'm expecting out of the rails so far. And before I forget, in case you haven't seen, there is another set of WTF rails for the GT called the low riders and those ones aren't out yet those ones give you an even lower center of gravity than the standard GT WTFs and they're primarily made for streets which I do enjoy but I also ride a lot of trails and so I think that these rails are gonna be the ones for me I will keep testing them out and let you know if I run into any issues but man if I'm, I have not had to bail off the board I have not had any trouble getting through some of these chunky rock gardens so I'm really digging them I guess that's Ginter for now if you have any questions on these rails or the previous WTF rails I was testing out or any mods I have on the board feel free to leave me a comment down below and if 
you enjoyed the video, found it helpful for installing the rails, or just like watching the ride footage, do me a solid, bonk that thumbs up button. It really does help out the channel. And of course, subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me. All right, my floaty friends. I'm gonna keep riding before that sun rises up even higher and starts melting me out here in this Phoenix desert. So, hope you guys have a great week. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Put me in some more videos. I want to be in some more videos. Oh, okay, next video. I'll put you in the next video. Jeez.